Identifying didendum vexillum is perhaps a job for an expert to formally do the process, but for somebody who wants to identify it in the field, there are a few characteristics which make it clearly uh, identifiable. It's buff brown in colour, it forms sheets, a bit like its name suggests, the carpet sea squirt, sheets that are buff brown in colour with small zoids all linked together in very small individual colonies unlike our big solitary ascidians which occur uh, covering many of the same sort of surfaces. The individual zoids are about a millimetre or so across and in between them they have little uh, water channels which make the appearance of the surface of the animal a bit like uh, veins on a leaf. Now it, it tends to overgrow other species of native sea squirt, particularly things like Ascidiella aspersa, Cyana intestinalis and some of the other non-natives like stale or clava that occur in, in this sort of environment. Um, there's, there's quite a few different colour morphologies. We do have, the, the commonest is a sort of buff brown colour, but it does go orange or sort of pinky orange as well as almost pure white at times as well. In the marina where we found it, it tends to colonise uh, other native sea squirts, but these tend to uh, be covering things like chains, sides of pontoons, undersides of boat hulls. And when it really gets going, it can cover more or less 100% of any available surface, ousting most of the local native, native species. Now, one thing that we're worried about is if it gets out of the marina, because in the marina itself, it's not necessarily causing any damage. But if it starts impacting our natural habitats, seabed habitats, then it can change the actual structure and makeup of the uh, species diversity. When the species gets out of control, it can spread very widely and, and impacts a lot of different industries and natural habitats. We know from experiences in the States that it's got out onto the Grand Banks and covered hundreds of square kilometres of seabed, where it affects things like the scallop fishing industry, as well as spawning grounds and natural habitats. In New Zealand, on the South Island, it's got into more than one of the fjords in the area and has affected quite badly the mussel growing industry where mussels are grown on ropes. And where infrastructure isn't available, it's actually difficult to control the spread of this species even further. In areas like the Menai Straits where we are now, we have a large area of mussel culture and it's a quite a valuable, uh, very valuable industry for this, this part of the world. There are estimates that would suggest that if the mussels are infected and it starts covering large areas of mussel bed, that we might be losing up to 20% of production in this particular area. Apart from the fact that boats and moorings and marinas need cleaning, the loss to the mussel industry could be quite enormous. It's uh, several million, up to six million pounds over a three year period could be lost due to the infection. On the management side of things, didemnum, when it gets going in, say, a marina, we hope to actually eradicate it. Now, there's various ways you can eradicate this species, but the simplest is perhaps just to cut off its water and oxygen supplies and literally smother it where it's growing. You can't scrape it off anything for the simple reason that if you do, small fragments of it will actually just float away and reinfect other areas and actually may increase its spread. So what we're going to try and do in, in the particular uh, example of the infection we have in Hollyhead Marina is create various bags and wraps that will cover the structures that are there and maybe use, even use something like an accelerant such as acetic acid or bleach granules to actually start the killing process off and then it's a matter of time just waiting a few days perhaps maybe a couple of weeks to see how fast we can actually get rid of it from the pontoon structures. From the point of view of boat hulls boats have got to be treated quite carefully simply because that if a boat sets off with an infection on its hull it'll uh, act as a vector and spread this species further. So we need to get them out of the water very carefully and then get them jet washed in an area where any debris that comes off, including small fragments of didemnum, don't get washed back into the sea. 
Now to avoid controlling the spread of the species any further, obviously we need to keep the boats clean and the marinas need to have some sort of policy to make sure that potentially infected boats are treated and that boats coming in from infected areas are looked at very carefully before they're allowed to sit in a marina for any length of time. Now this is something that maybe the marinas themselves have to control through their own policies. Uh, it's very difficult for, for us to actually impose something on them very strictly using any existing legislation. One of the main things with a didemnid infection and actually treating it is to actually respond rapidly. There's no point allowing it to escape into the, into the wider environment if it's going to come back and reinfect an area. There's one thing that um, we're trying to do is get the local marinas to implement their own code of practice on this to actually treat boats as they come in or make sure that boats that are infected are taken out of the water and jet washed.